Hey, welcome to another episode of The Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. Before we get into the segment, by the end of this video, I want you to do a few things for me. First of all, if you like the video, hit the like button. Please do. If you don't like it, hit unlike. It's okay. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Sometimes, as Jimmy Doyle would say, you find yourself unsubscribed and you need to make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell right next to it so you can be notified when a new video is being dropped. Whoop, there it is. And more importantly, the Super Chat will be on for this segment. So if you want to donate uh, toward the efforts of Bob TV, that's freely up to you. I do have a job, but any amount will help toward the growth of this channel. And more important, let us help you help us by introducing you to a program. There's a link down below that says Equal Justice for All. You're going to click that video link. And there's some educational tutorial about a phenomenal program in America that is really making equal justice a reality for every citizen. So this program is phenomenal. Um, the proceeds from you participating in the program will go back 10%. Will go back into um, the Bob TV YouTube channel. So anyway, my name is Robert Brown with the Rob Report. Let's get into it. Blue collar, Blue collar. White, collar. white collar, black professors, black professors. white scholars, scholars. politicians, Dalai Lamas. Everybody in the whole wide world need hope if I be honest. I'm in that number. Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of Rob Report. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown. How you doing today? Well, as you know, Beto O'Rourke is in the race and, um, and, uh, Nobody's really excited about that, I guess, for those Texans who didn't really get out the vote to make him beat Ted Cruz, of all people. And he lost to him. You lost to this dude. And uh, now he's running for president, thinking he can become president. And to each his own, I welcome it, because the more corporatists is in the race, uh, the lesser corporatists be able to win the nomination. And even though I have my problem with certain candidates, I do admit certain candidates bring a little something better to the table than corporatism. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, corporatism over things that's going to really lift up people, I choose things really going to lift up people. And uh, this guy is not it. But this is the picture that they want you to know about Beto O'Rourke. But they never, ever show you this picture of Beto O'Rourke. Well, 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 look it up. That's right. This picture of Beto O'Rourke. That's right. According to the TechCrunch, Beto O'Rourke could be the first hacker president. Let's take a look at this. When Beto O'Rourke ran for Senate in Texas, millions of voters connected with his message and his story. The boy from El Paso who formed a punk band, ran a business, served on the local city council, and then in the U.S. Congress. Thank you all for being here with us, being with us every single step of the way. Now he's running for president. But his supporters don't know his full story. Almost no one does. Reuters has learned that when he was a teenager, Beto O'Rourke was a hacker. Not just that, he was a member of one of the most influential hacker collectives of all time, a group that calls itself the Cult of the Dead Cow. Beto O'Rourke joined in the very early years when it was uh, a network of friends, really, who each had their own bulletin boards, their own online hangouts devoted to their interests uh, and their friends and strangers who stumbled onto their writing. So in Beto O'Rourke's case, it was uh, a board called Taco Land, and it was largely about music, largely about punk music. Reuters correspondent Joseph Mann covers cybersecurity. He uncovered O'Rourke's secret past while researching a forthcoming book on the cult of the dead cow. While the term hacker today carries sinister connotations of cyber attacks and espionage, there is nothing to suggest Beto O'Rourke ever broke into computers or stole data. But in an interview with the author, O'Rourke admitted some of his teenage exploits were illegal. My interview with Beto O'Rourke, he uh, conceded that he broke the law when he was a teenager. He stole long-distance service. At the time, in the 1980s, this was commonplace for teenagers who wanted to connect uh, into online bulletin boards. They were sort of like the, uh, the underground newspapers of the day. This was before the World Wide Web. 
if you wanted to connect to a bulletin board, which is what most of the discussion sites were called, uh, unless it was in your area code, it was a very expensive toll call. Uh, it was hundreds of dollars worth of uh, phone bills for your parents. And Beto O'Rourke, like pretty much every hacker his age, uh, admitted to stealing long distance service as a teenager. The statute of limitations has long run out on any such crimes. As a group, the cult of the dead cow gained worldwide attention for releasing hacking tools that let users take control of Windows software, forcing Microsoft to confront security problems with its programs. Uh, I've released several security advisories on various pieces of commercial software, which have uh, prompted vendor patches, which means they improved the software after we pointed it out to them. Uh, unfortunately, many times they would not improve the software until we actually went public with the findings. Uh, companies do indeed want to ignore problems as long as possible. Uh, it's cheaper for them. Later on, members would coin the term hacktivism, focused on helping people living under repressive regimes circumvent government censorship. But for many, including O'Rourke, the group was a place to socialize online and share creative writing. And O'Rourke did this under a pseudonym. The pseudonym was Psychedelic Warlord, and this writing is still online as we speak. It was a very interesting range. Some of the pieces were political. There was another piece in, uh, in which uh, an idealistic uh, young Beto O'Rourke mused about what the world would be like without money. Uh, would the government wither away? Would it fall? And then there was one that was a murderous fantasy. He was 15 years old and uh, the narrator um, in this first person story wrote about running over children because they were too happy. 15 year old boys have violent thoughts most don't express them in writing. I understand why they would do so anonymously. We're showing up and we're listening to people. In an interview for the book, Beto O'Rourke explained that the hacker mindset could be very helpful to society. He said hackers examine the world as it really is, not as it is supposed to work. O'Rourke said hackers look for flaws in systems, whether that is software, the media, or government, with a view to making them better. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read this article from TechCrunch. It's a Democratic presidential candidate. Beto O'Rourke has revealed he was a member of a notorious decade-old hacking group. Now, at this time, he was about 15. The former congressman was a member of the Texas-based hacker group, the Cult of the Dead Cow, known for inspiring early hacktivism in the Internet age and building exploits and hacks for Microsoft Windows. The group used the Internet as a platform in the 1990s to protest real world events, often uh, to promote human rights and denounce censorship among its many release. The Cult of the Dead Cow was best known for its back orifice program and remote access and administrative tool. O'Rourke went by the handle Psychedelic Warlord, as revealed by Rudders which broke the story, as you just saw. But as he climbed the political ranks, first elected to the El Paso City Council in 2005, he reportedly grew concerned that his membership with the group would harm his political aspiration. The group's members kept O'Rourke's secret safe until the ex-hackers confirmed to Rudders his association with the group. <coughs> Rudders described him as the most prominent ex-hacker in American political history who on Thursday announced his candidacy for President of the United States. If he wins the White House, he will become the first hacker president. O'Rourke history sheds light on how the candidate approaches and understands technolo tech technological issues that face the United States today. He's one of the few presidential candidates to, to run for the White House with more than a monicum of tech knowledge and the crucial awareness of the good and the problems tech can bring at a policy level. I understand the democrat uh, democratizing power of the internet and how transformative it was for me personally and how it leveraged the extraordinary intelligence of these people all over the country who were sharing ideas and techniques, O'Rourke told Rudders. The 46 year old has yet to address supporters about the new revelation. Now, this is his team that he worked with, and you um, saw in the Rudder's piece, um, one of the guys that testified, uh, I guess, to um, a Senate hearing com committee, uh, 
But um, gotta talk about this because here we are. We're 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 we just got off election of Trump. Wasn't even four years ago, and we tried to say the Russians hacked the election. We even went as far as saying the Russians hacked the system that you use to vote for people and put it in the favor of Trump over Hillary Clinton. And that's not true. Hillary Clinton actually won the popular vote. <clears throat> but in this country, it's not about popularity. It's where you win. Trump won in other states. You just can't hack that. He campaigned in other states. He won fair and square in those other states. Hillary was too prissy and uppity and high class to go to those states. But we're still dealing with the issue of hacking. We're still dealing with the issue of cybersecurity. We're still dealing with the threats of Russia maybe messing with the electrical grids and things like that, knowing we do the same thing too. Yet we got a person right here running for president who already held himself to be the white Obama. Um, Vox said that he's more of a Republican-leaning type Democrat. He's a Joe Manchin type. Hard to believe that. But he's... Good looking, uh, slim Obama type that could probably cripe, get the crowd hyped up and probably can get the young crowd. Uh, and this may give him some street cred. Yo, I used to I used to be a hacker. But in this day and age, there's no such thing as user. Used to be. Hacking is prevalent right now. And hacking does um, affect people's uh, personal information. That's how we found out about the DNC. And who knows if there are going to be hackers out there who favor you and love you and champion you that's not going to go out there and do hacking for you. It's bound to ha happen. That same hacking team that he used to be part of could be getting together right now to push this election toward his way. This is the way I'm seeing it. Because as they say, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Once a hacker, always a hacker. You may be out of the hacker community, but because you're one of them, they'll probably support you and do what the Russians were alleged to do with Donald Trump and help you get elected in the primaries and the national. So is it a conflict of interest that Beto O'Rourke, a hacker, back when he was a teenager, this man is in his 40s now, 30 years later now, could that still affect him in this election? I say it could highly affect him in this election because him being known as a hacker presidential candidate that used to hack when he was a kid, it's like saying that, yo, I, uh, yo we got a thug uh, president. I used to sell drugs, but now I, I was a kid. But no, it just don't fly. Now I got a former president that sold drugs. Hey, look, your past is your past, but that don't mean that do not mean that the hacker community isn't going to like Beto O'Rourke, champion Beto O'Rourke, and do whatever they can to help him become president. Expose everybody's secrets, whatever. And it may not be his particular hacker group, but the fact that you're one of us, dog, we're going to have your back. It's a conflict of interest. It's a conflict of interest. So uh, that's the special report on this. Baylor O'Rourke, former hacker. He is um, a hacker president that probably still got some hacking skills and skateboards and all that. And he does all that. That makes him look a little cooler. So when it comes to the hacking community, they'll go support this guy in every way, shape, and fashion. Now, in this election, I'm not looking for Mr. Cool. I'm looking for Mr. Get Something Done. And the bottom line is to still, Beto O'Rourke is a corporate-centric, rich uh, politician who lost to Ted Cruz, who, who is an icon right now to the hacker community, who himself used to be a hacker. It's just not good. It's just not good. And to me, I think it's a conflict of interest. But tell me what you think by leaving it in the comments below. I'm Robert Brown with The Raw Report. I'll let you later. Peace.